Come on, Bubba, we gotta get in the shot. All right, little wrap up video for, for Mr. George. Um, we'll see how we get this because he does not like if I do not give him 100% of my attention. So um, I put the prong on him yesterday and he's responding to it really well. I see a little bit of uh, frustration and resistance from it when he tries to do his things like not wanting to walk forward or pulling into the car, things like that. He's super accepting of it up until those points where he'll kind of be like, what is that? He's been bamboozled into having to move with me. So I want him to yes, understand how to remove that pressure. So anytime I create a little bit of tension in the leash, the moment that he kind of moves towards that source, yes, I'm going to discontinue that tension and switch over to the reward marker and reward him. Um, so uh, markers, that is always where I start out, um, is helping him understand what I'm looking for and, and what to expect with it within a reward event. Do you need to hop out over here? You're really struggling. Come get it. Yes, there it is. All right, now we can pay attention. Come on, George. Yes. So a marker is going to be a word that Mark, oops, sorry, but marks a moment in time that I like something that he does. And for him, that's going to announce the arrival of the reinforcer. So I want to make sure that that associate, association is created. Nope. Where uh, marker equals presentation of food. And that way, when he does a behavior and I mark and reward it, that behavior is going to take on the good feeling of receiving food so that he will be more likely to continue to do that behavior in the future. Uh, and then I have different markers just to kind of help him understand what I'm looking for when he hears those words. So the big one that I'm working on right now is, yes, he knows that that eagle, oh, he felt something else. George. Yes. Wow, good job. He knows that yes equals I like what you did. Come take something from me. Um, there's a smell right there, so he protests that. And I want him, and the big thing right now is learning how to respond. Yes, learning how to respond to leash pressure. So you'll see like a little bit of resistance, right? Like he's used to digging into that pressure and it go, comes off when there's when we, he doesn't listen, right? So I wanna be very mindful of how much pressure I'm applying and the type of pressure because if I just do like that locked in pressure, um, what I see is them kind of resisting it more. So what I wanna do is kind of do, yes, like a little bit of a wiggle. That way it's not such a dead weight and a dead drag. Like I don't want to drag him or anything like that. So please. Go ahead. Good is the other marker and that's going to be our duration marker. That means I like what you did. Come take something or I'm going to bring the reinforcer to you. Please. Go ahead. Go ahead. I want him to continue to do it, so I'm going to pay him in behavior and then okay. That's going to be our terminal marker, meaning that the behavior is over. George, yes. I don't really know if I finished going over the yes marker. Yes means I like you did come take something from me. That reward event is going to be fun and playful, and I want to add a little bit of movement. I want to capitalize on his little bit of prey drive and make the thing that he wants almost a little bit harder to obtain to increase his motivation to get it. So, yes. Whoa. So I'm using that yes marker for teaching him how to respond to leash pressure, to build engagement, um, to eventually when we're not in the training room to kind of um, create new responses to maybe stressful events where he's like, I don't really understand that, I'm worried about it. I can kind of mark and reward and get him up and playing with me and not fixating on stressors in his environment. George, yes, wow. Um, intro to recall, we're just doing name recognition when he hears his name and he looks over at me, I'm gonna YES that so that he can come take a reinforcer. So it's kind of like the intro to a recall uh, without actually saying the word come and have him maybe not respond to it. So I wanna see how well he responds to his name and then as he starts, George, yes! As he starts uh, flying back when he hears his name, I'll just layer in that the come command. So I'll show that. George, come. Yes. Come on. Um, we're working on his out. 
so that he's not jumping on us. If he starts, I don't know, I haven't been wearing pants lately because it's hot, but um, when he's going to grab at pants and things like that, anytime he's starting to kind of get a little bit spicy with me or uh, invade my space or jump up on me is really what I mean by that, um, I can teach him how to move away from me. Come here, George. Away. So, out. Yes. I'm just kind of creating that. Ooh. That muscle, mo muscle memory, uh, when he hears the word out, he's typically turning and facing away. So we do enough reps of that. At some point I can say out, he does it, and then I can pay him then, if that makes sense. Out, please. George. George, go away. Okay, I'm not gonna pay for that, that was terrible. Face. Good boy. Good. George, come, yes, wow, yeah, this is a good boy, well done, come on, and this is my friend, let's do the big boy, hey, please, wow, such a good boy, and then, um, he's been doing really great with his heel, now that he has the on one, he has, he's much more responsive, and attentive to me. And I don't, like right now in this stage, I'm not actually using the Kong that much other than to, okay, other than to give him a little bit of feedback because he was, he was kind of dragging himself around um, when we first got here. It's, I mostly want to rely on luring and putting value with him being in this area of my body. So let's go. We're getting his go away, his heel position down. Let's go. Good. So again, like I'm not doing a lot of good, a lot of leash stuff unless I'm introducing it. Good. So like what I did right there, I'm starting to go ahead. Good. I just did like a light little tap as I turned my back in. Good. And as soon as he kind of backed off, I discontinued the little tappies. And I said good at me. Good. Very nice. Okay. It might not be something that you pick up. I can't even tell. It's so far away from from here. Now I might not be able to pick it up in the video, but super, super subtle movements away from the source of pressure is what I'm looking like. If he's feeling a tap, 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 and he kind of goes this way, it's more about what I feel in the leash. That's what I'm gonna pay, because I want him to have a soft response to leash pressure. I don't want to have to like put, I mean, especially since he's so small, I don't want to have to put a lot of pressure onto leash. I want it to be just the gradual like flick of my finger and he feels that and he responds to it. I hope that makes sense. This is my last video of the day on a Friday, so my brain is all over the place, so I hope any of this makes sense. Um, he's doing really well, um, super fun and playful. He's really silly and mischievous, and I like that. Um, he's doing well with all the dogs here. He's not giving anyone any trouble, and he likes coming over here to train, which is a plus. So um, he enjoys coming over here, he enjoys making treats and learning things. And he's very like, I'm gonna use the word manipulative, but I don't, like in a good way, like he is definitely working to make his situation better, which is exactly what I want from a dog. I want him, I want a dog that is trying to figure out the system. And if he thinks that it's his idea, that makes him more likely to do it right, even though I want those things. I want him to think that it's his idea and that he's accomplishing things. George! Out. Wow, so fun. Um, Typical man, it has to be your idea, right? Yeah. So he comes in here and he's ready to do stuff and he's trying to control everything and it's it's it might benefit. Um, so I keep working him through leash pressure. I just put the prong on him yesterday, so it's new information for him. So he's not 100% of it yet. I want to make sure that he understands it, so it's not just like an aversive tool. I want him to feel again like a little bit of pressure move away from it, it goes away, and you go back to positive reinforcement. That's my goal with that. Um, if he gets stuck, like earlier he got stuck, like he was smelling something, and I put maybe just a little bit too much pressure. He's so small, so there's like that really fine line. But he's so brave on the bridge. Um, and he did a little earth because he wasn't 100% sure how to remove that pressure. So those are the things I want to work him through so that he's finding his advantage. And again, if he's thinking that it's his idea, um, and we can have better communication so that he's not, you know, putting so much pressure that he's putting strain on his back or his little neck or anything like that. George, George, come, yes. Well, so smart. I'm running out of treats. Good job. Yay. Um, this week has mostly.
mostly been in the training room. Um, we've been doing little spurts out and about, like in the morning or the afternoon. It's just so hot during the day that I've been doing most of my training inside anyways, or on field trips. Um, next week, we'll probably do a lot of field trips so we can stay out of the heat. Um, and we'll just branch out so we can generalize the stuff that he learned here for his first week. He's breezing through everything, so I want to make sure that he understands this equals this everywhere, not just in the training room or whatever the situation is that we're working in. All right, you say goodbye? <laughs> All right, if you have any questions, um, do not hesitate to reach out and I will answer those.